Hey, welcome back. It is the rainy season and it's important for you and I to be aware of the risks associated with lightning in particular. One would ask what type of weather leads to the formation of lightning and what do you look out for? What do you look out for during thunderstorms? It's a conversation we are having this hour. Research shows that more people are dying from lightning strikes in South Africa every year. Well, we have this conversation now uh, with an expert on lightning safety, Professor Ryan Blumenthal, who is Senior Specialist Forensic Pathologist and Associate Professor in the Department of Forensic Medicine at the University of Pretoria. Good evening, and thank you for joining us, Prof. So let's start with this. I don't know, in, from your understanding, uh, the Gauteng thunderstorm, is legendary. It's, you know, we are known for uh, our thunderstorms. And if you are not caught in the middle of it, it's a, it's a spectacular sight. And we all whip out our cameras and want to capture it until you are caught on the wrong end of it. Just from your understanding of the weather systems and patterns uh, that <clears> lead to these powerful and mighty thunderstorms in Gauteng, particularly in as far as they manifest through lightning. Thank you very much. The thunderstorm season has officially begun, so we can start to see lots of lightning. And you are 100% correct. It is spectacular. I mean, it rivals the northern lights. I don't know why people travel to the northern hemisphere to see the northern lights when on the very high felt you can see real drama play out before your eyes. Um, but yet, as beautiful as it is, is as deadly as it is. So... This is the official start of the season, and it will run until April 2023. We've just had our first thunderstorms beginning now, which are much needed, I must say. Yeah. So let's talk about the formation of lightning. What do we know about the perfect conditions for the formation of lightning? And, and, and perhaps even beyond that, what, what is in this bolt um, that makes it so dangerous? All right, it's very complex physics. I don't want to go um, too deeply into it, but I think if you're going to become a lightning expert, before you even start discussing the physics, I think we need to know how to spell it. And I must say I'm very impressed that lightning is being spelled correctly here. It's L-I-G-H-T-N-I-N-G. Everyone usually spells it with an E or lighting, you know, as if it's enlightening or lighting. So if you're going to understand this phenomenon, spelling is the first way to begin then it is very complex physics. Now, I am a forensic pathologist, so I should stick to my field, but uh, it basically has to do with convective thunderstorms, of which the high felt is renowned. And there's many theories as to how this forms. You know, there's the dipole theory, the tripole theory, but what our viewers need to know is when all is said and done, when thunder roars, get indoors. This is my big message for this um, interview. You know, this thing is deadly. It is the one phenomenon that I do autopsies on the most. We lose about 80 to 100 people a year, every, every year in South Africa, and seven times as many are struck and survive. And this is entirely preventable. This is not like communicable diseases. Um, you know, this is, this is totally preventable when thunder roars get indoors. Prof, did, did, did I hear you correctly? Please run those numbers by me once again. Uh, did you say this is one of those areas where you do more autopsies um, on than, than others? And, and just share those numbers with us again. All right, so it is the most consistent weather killer. It kills more people on Earth than tornadoes, than floods, etc. As a forensic pathologist, this is the one weather phenomenon on which I do the most autopsies. In my career of 20 years, I've performed about 90 autopsies on lightning victims. So on Earth, we'll lose about 24,000 people a year due to lightning, and there will be about 240,000 that will be struck and survive. So it is the most consistent weather killer. Mm. And you're saying when it thunders, run indoors. But are you able to share uh, from your experience because, I, you know, you, you know what it is that, that becomes the cause of death when someone is caught in a, in a lightning bolt. Um, from your knowledge, if you can't be indoors, are there ways uh, to, to sort of protect yourself from, from being caught in, in a lightning bolt and, and ending up uh, with the disastrous consequences that you see uh, so often? 
Okay, so we have to know the enemy. So lightning will kill you between 3.30 in the afternoon and 6.30 at night. That is when our late afternoon thunder showers take place. So you've got to know the weather of your area. You have to treat it seriously. This is a deadly thing that can injure and kill. You want to give yourself sufficient time to get home. What is a safe structure? It is anything inside a fully enclosed metallic surface area known as a Faraday cage or a Gaussian surface area. So what you want to do is get inside a, a car is brilliant, for example, or you want to walk directly under ESCOM lines. That is also quite safe. What you don't want to do is be on the top of a hill. You don't want to be standing under a tree. Um, you've got to be um, smart about this. You know, you, first thing you've got to know is that this thing is dangerous and it kills, and you've got to give yourself enough time to get to a safe shelter. That is, that is key. So also in South Africa, there's lots of rugby matches and cricket matches and swimming goalers. The inconvenience of stopping a game is less than the inconvenience of a dead player. Absolutely. So if a storm is within 20 kilometers of the game, you should be on high alert. And if it's within 10 kilometers of the match or the game, the game must stop. Rather, wait than 30 minutes till the last rumble before you continue with the game. Yeah. A very simple rule of thumb for the viewers is the 30-30 rule. If between flash and bang, there's 30 seconds, you're at risk. And you should wait 30 minutes after the last rumble to go back outside. Huh. That is fascinating. Thank you for that, As especially that rule of thumb uh, of 30-30. Um, I, I didn't know about that. But just lastly, did I hear you correctly? Did you say that one of the safer things to do in the circumstances would be to walk directly under uh, electricity cables? Did, did I hear correctly there? Correct. If they are there, you should walk under them. Wow. Um, you, it's theory of equipotentialization. So you're actually safe if you follow the ESCOM lines. If you walk under high power lines, you're safe. Safer. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that is, a, <laughs> that is something else because, you know, your, your natural instinct is that avoid it at all costs, uh, given the whole thing about electricity. But thank you for those insights. Uh, it's an important conversation uh, to have, especially now as we get into the season, we'll be having those uh, thunderstorms in the Highfield and elsewhere. That is Professor Ryan Blumenthal there uh, sharing some insights as we get into that season.